फास्टिंग What was the answer? According to sixteen eighty five, Sunanu ibn Majah, yes, they can. When does fasting become useless, or which person does not get any benefit from fasting? According to Hadith sixteen eighty nine, it becomes useless when one does not give up evil and ignorant ignorant speech. and does not give up bad deeds mention two sunnahs for fasting person the first is eating suhoor and the second is taking a nap after duhur what is the sunnah time of suhoor according to hadith 1694 the last time of suhoor is this is the is the sunnah time for suhoor meal okay so what is the last time for suhoor um, today or these days in your city in our city maghrib is 4 uh, no uh, fajr is 5 it starts 5 mm. so what is suhoor time then So suhoor time will be like up to five, five or five, last time to eat. Yes, five. So you will start eating at five, and you can continue eating until five twenty seven. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. You see this. Again? So five twenty seven, one minute before fajr. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So when fajr time start, then you cannot eat anything. and when will you continue eating at what time will you break the fast we'll break the fast maghrib time 1622 yeah. yes so that is the best time don't delay this is so now so what is the best time for breaking fast The time according to her, it's sixteen ninety five and ninety seven. The yeah. time after the sunset is the best time to break the fast. Correct. So it means we should not delay. And what is recommended to break fast with? It is recommended to break fast with dates or water for purification. Water for. For purification. it has nothing to do with purification mm. nothing to do with just first priority is date if date is not available then drink water so this okay. this is recommended and it does not has anything to do with purification drinking water okay not taking bath or nothing else just drinking water so Okay. Now today we will study the book Sunan At-Tirmizi, Hadith number twenty-three forty-one. Read this Hadith. Uthman bin Affan narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There is no right for the son of Adam in other than this." these things a house which he lives in a garment which covers his nakedness and jilf a piece of bread and water hasan basically you have right over these three things only house dress garment and basic food and if you lose any other thing you cannot make any complaint to allah because the you don't have any right 
about them. If Allah gives you other things, good. If Allah does not give you other things, you cannot make any complaint to Allah. You have right on over only three things. What are, what are these three things? The house. Yes. And, and clothes. Mm. And food. Mm. So here they use the house word. Basically it means residence. So whether you own it or whether you don't own it, it does not matter. Even if it is our own rent, no problem. Next student. Miss Hoor. Mm, Mutarif narrated from his father that he met up with the Prophet ﷺ while he was saying the mutual uh, increase in uh, words you he said the son adam says my wealth my wealth but is whether something for you from your wealth besides what you give in charity that remains or you eat which perishes or what you wear that grows worn so whatever you own, whatever money you have, only two things are for you. The one which you give in charity and the one which you use yourself for eating or wearing clothes. All other things, basically other people will get after your death or maybe in your life. So these are basically not your, you have these things only for some temporary time, not for whole life. Next student R. Um, Muhammad. Abu Umar narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O son of Adam, if you give your surplus, it is better for you. And if you keep it, it is worse for you. But there is no harm with what is sufficient. And begin the giving with your dependents. And the upper hand giving is better than the lower hand receiving. Mm -hmm. We need an example. Can we take your example? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Do you do any job? Yes. Okay. What is your average daily income? Uh, monthly. Daily on average, okay, monthly. Let's suppose month. What is your average monthly income? Monthly, like two thousand. Two thousand pounds, okay. Now, basic needs, which include your residence. Does your husband have a job as well? Yes. Okay, and how much he earns monthly? Make it 3,000. 3,000. And children, are they doing any job or work? No, okay. they're still studying. Okay, so total is 5,000. Now, basic expenditure like residence, then traveling, which include your car or going to work, something like this, education, bills, these are the necessity of life these days. Education, bills, medical, etc. On average, what do you think? How much monthly expense? For the whole family? Like 3,000. Okay, 3,000. So this means at the end of month, you will have 2,000 pounds left with you according to this or these what shall you do with these 2000 pounds shall you keep them for the future of your children or for future house for future car or shall you give them in charity give them in charity yes it, it sounds a little bit odd for all of us even me and everyone else but Islamically, this is the best thing to you. Don't worry about the future, 
Don't worry about the future of your children. Don't worry about your future house, future car. You are getting these things these days. Then inshallah Allah will provide you these basic necessary things in future as well inshallah. So best thing, give these 2000 pounds to someone and recommend this to those who are your poor relatives. These they have first priority, then maybe poor neighbors, then other orphan people have the third right, as per my knowledge, then other poor people. So these are the so first right has the poor relatives, second right, poor neighbors, third right. Poor orphans and fourth right. Poor other poor people. Okay. So basically Islam discourages you to save anything for the future. So if you save anything according to this hadith. Basically, whatever you will save for the future, it will be a, an evil for you. So here we will write What shall we do if some money is left with you at the end of month. What shall we do? If some money is with us at the end of the month, in the answer we will write <clears throat> according to the hadith twenty three forty three of Sunan. At-Tirmizi. We should give it in charity. We should give it in charity. And if we keep it, it will be an evil for us. And if we keep it, it will be become an evil for us. I will repeat the answer according to the Hadith. 2343 of Sunan Atirmizi. If we give it in charity, it will be better for us. And if we, we save it, if we hold it, if we store it, then it will be an evil for us. Next student, Ms. Hoor, repeat the question and the answer.
what shall we do if some money is left with us at the end of the month according to hadith 2343 sanan at we should give it in charity if we keep it it will be become an evil for us now what does it mean it can become evil for us it is a halal income there is nothing wrong in it what does the word shar mean here the evil mean here any idea yes or no maybe we will we will use it for something which is not important maybe basically evil mean uh, is for i understand it uh, will increase the love of life love of worldly things in our heart and when the love of worldly thing will increase in our heart we will also become unlike other people we will just focus on worldly life and we will think less about our next life which is the main purpose of our life and when we give it in charity then we will think less about this life and worry more, to, more about our future life, our next life, which is our main goal. So basically, Islam discourages you to save anything. Okay, Miss Who, read the next one. Twenty three forty four hadith Umar bin Al Khattab narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If you were to re really upon Allah with the required religion, then He would provide for you just as the bird is provided for it goes out in the morning empty and return full." So hey, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the example of birds. Why? Birds birds don't store anything. Other animals, some insects especially, store their food for the winter season, for the tough times. But birds never store anything. They just earn or they just gather whatever is necessary for them. They eat it. And then they don't worry about the winter season. When winter comes, if they find food, they stay at that place. If they don't, if the birds don't find any food in the winter season, they migrate to other places. That's why Prophet ﷺ gave this example. Another thing in this hadith for us is that if we really trust Allah, like He has the right to trust it, then Allah will also give us just like He gives to the birds. And this hadith is also connected to the previous hadith. We save our money by thinking that we will buy this thing for our children. We will save money for the education of our children in future, for house of our children in future. But if we really trust Allah, then Allah will provide them these basic things just like He is providing you today. No need to worry about future much. Just worry about next life. Mr. Muhammad. Anas bin Malik narrated, there are two brothers during the time of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of them used to come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other had some business. The businessman among them complained to the Prophet wasallam about his brother. So he said, perhaps you are provided because of him. Sahih. Mm -hmm. Do you know any poor person? Yes. Give me one name. There are many poor people. Give me one poor people name. Poor person name. Like in my families, 
Yes, very someone who is very close to you in blood relation. Yeah, my auntie. Okay. Let's suppose you have an auntie. Her name is maybe Sarah. Okay. Let me zoom it. Her name is maybe Sarah. Now Sarah is maybe very old. Maybe she is sick and she cannot earn anything. She is very poor. So you decided to give her something on monthly basis or whenever she needs anything, she comes to you for help, for asking money. Sometime devil may put this thought in your mind that Sarah is a burden upon you. She is a useless lady and she is an extra burden. You are doing hard work. You are doing job and then giving money to Sarah. But in reality, maybe Allah is giving you this job or this money only because of her. Only because of her. So that what this, this, this means that sometimes we may feel a person is useless burden upon us. But in reality, Allah is giving us money only because of that person. It also means that if Let's suppose we stop helping Sarah. We think that she is a burden upon us. We stop giving him money. Then Allah will probably stop us giving money because Allah was giving us only because of our help that we are giving to Sarah. Sometime Allah provides us money for someone else. So he's getting his risk through us, through our mean. Miss Hood. Salma bin Obedullah bin Miss Mehsan al Khatmi narrated, narrated from his father and he was a messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever among you wakes up in the morning secured in his dwelling healthy healthy in his body having his food for a day then it it is has if the word word has been gathered for him So basically, if a person is getting these things, then this means Allah is giving all the necessary blessings to him. He cannot make any complaint that Allah has gathered the whole world for him. Sadly, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, they are not getting these things. And we Muslims are unable to do anything for them. Even our leaders are not trying to do anything. Our numbers are much greater than the Israelis, but no one is trying to stop Israel. Miss Umayama, next. Abu Umama narrated that the Prophet wasallam said, Indeed, the best of my friends to me is the one who merged a condition, whose Shia is in Salah, worshipping his Lord well and obeying him even in private. He is obscure among the people such that the fingers are not pointed towards him. His provisions are not only what is sufficient and he is patient with that. Then he tapped his fingers with his fingers and said, his death comes quickly, his mourners are few and his inheritance is little. With this above, with this the above chain, it is narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, my Lord presented to me that he will make the valley of Makkah into gold for me. I said, no, O Lord, but being filled for a day and hungry for a day, or he said three days or something like that. So when I'm hungry, I will beseech you and remember you. And when I'm full, I will be grateful to you and praise you. 
So who is best of Prophet friends? Basically, all Muslim claim, every Muslim claim that he is a friend of Prophet He loved Prophet But who is the best friend according to Prophet so we all claim to be friend of Prophet Sallallahu but who is the best? Who is the best among the friends of the prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the best Among the friends of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, basically, according to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is best to him? In the answer, you write according to Hadith 23.47, the one who is in meager conditions and praise five salah or praise salah you can say and worship and obey Allah well even <clears throat> in private coma obscure among the people and getting only sufficient provisions and he is patient with that. Usually he has quick death and few people mourns for him and his inheritance is later as well. I will repeat the answer. According to Hadith 2347, <clears throat> the one who is in meager condition, coma, praise salah, coma, worship and obey Allah, even in private, coma, obscure among people, coma, just have sufficient provisions, coma, usually a quick death, coma, few mourners coma little inheritance so the first thing here we have meager condition meager condition means any idea what is meager condition yes or no no Okay, meager condition means very hand-to-mouth person. Okay, a person who has very little income, just enough to provide him <clears throat> uh, basic needs. Very difficult condition. You can see a poor person normally, a meager person, very little income. Second thing is easy, he prays Salah and worship. Allah both in even in private then the third thing is obscure among people do you know what is obscure
Yes or no? No. Obscure mean the one who is not very famous among the people. Okay. A common person who does not have many followers on social media. Very few people know him. His social circle is very small. Not very famous. Then the next thing is provisions are very sufficient. Basically, the one who is in bigger condition. Same thing. He is patient with that, which means he is happy. He is not sad with his income. Sometimes a good person also has a difficult death. But uh, this person usually has a quick death. Okay. Then since he is not very famous among the people, since he is a poor person, this means mourners were, will be few for such person. And since he is a poor person, so his inheritance will be littered. But such person is the best friend to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Repeat the question and the answer. Who is the best among the friends of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? According to Hadith 2347, the one who is in major condition and pray salah and, and worship and obey Allah well even in private and provisions are sufficient and has quick death. Few, few people mourn for him and his inheritance is little. <clears throat> Next thing is about Prophet Wasallam that Allah offered him <clears throat> turn the valley into gold, but he did not do that because as we know when we are in difficult situation, we remember Allah more. And when we have the worldly blessings, we are even often tend to forget Allah. That's why he decided not to take that valley of gold. So that is enough for today. If anybody has any question, they can ask me. If maybe I have my brother and he is capable of working, but he doesn't want to work, and if I help him, is it a good or is it is like I'm spoiling him? Yes, in this case, you are spoiling him. Okay, so a person who does not do any hard work. So if we give him money, this means we are basically spoiling him. We can stop such person. We better not give that person anything. So if I give in like Sadaka, I won't get anything. You will get your place of reward, but it is your job to do, see what that person is doing. If uh, he's in good condition, then this means he's not very deserving person. Deserving persons are those who can't earn money or maybe they are sick. Maybe they have some disability, some other issues that they cannot earn money. They have more right over your charity than this person who is a lazy person. Okay. So I have seen people who take donation from other people and in return they drink alcohol with that donation. They take drugs, narcotics with the donations of other people. So, whenever we came to know about such person, we should not give them anything, even if they die. Anybody else? See you all next time, inshallah. Masalama. Inshallah, masalama. Jazakallah khair. जो मांगने के लिए आते हैं वो भी देख रहे पेशा वाले हैं तो उनको भी कुछ नहीं देना चाहिए मैं कुछ नहीं देता उन्हें मैं कोशिश करता हूं उन्हीं को दूं जिनको मैं आम पैसे जानता हूं ذاتی طور پہ जिनका मुझे पक्का पक्का पता होता है कि वाकई कोई मसला है जिनको मैं नहीं जानता मैं उनको मैं देता भी नहीं